We have seen in another video what is the importance of having fast start failover in a data guard configuration. A next question would be, where should I put the observer in a fast start failover configuration? Should I put the observer on the primary side? Should I put it on the secondary side? Or should I put it on the third side? And how about multiple observer? So in this video, we will try to understand the best practices of uh, server placement. We can put the observer, as I said, on the primary, on the standby, or on the third side. And we have to consider the different failures that we can have in a fast start failover situation, uh, where I can have the primary database failure, the standby database failure, networking problem between the primary and the secondary site, or have a full primary or standby site failure, or I can just have the observer failing. So if I put the observer on the primary side, what will happen, for example, if I lose the primary database? Well, in that case, um, the primary database is not available anymore, the observer cannot see it, and it will still see the standby database, therefore it will initiate a fast start failover. And this is something that we expect when the primary is not available. If I lose the standby database, the quorum is with the primary database. The observer can still see the primary database and uh, uh, give the primary database the permission to keep writing without the protection of the standby database. And this is also something that we expect. And this is true regardless of if we lose the standby database or the full standby site. Now, if you lose the network between the primary and the standby site, we have a similar situation. Again, the primary database has connection with the observer and it will keep writing without the protection of the standby database. But what if we lose uh, the full primary site? So in this situation, we see that we lose at the same time the primary database and the observer. And there is no more quorum with the standby. Therefore, there is nothing that can initiate an automatic failover. So if we have lost the full primary site, this is a situation where we have to trigger a manual uh, failover. So this is a gap of having uh, the observer on the primary side. And of course, if we lose just the observer, um, while well, the primary and the standby will still have connectivity, so the primary is still protected, can still keep writing, but without an observer uh, observing the fast start failover configuration. What happens if we put the observer on the standby side? If I lose the primary database, in this situation, I have an automatic failover. And this is something that we expect. And this is true also if you lose the full primary side because we have no primary database anymore and the quorum is on the standby side with the observer and the standby database. So we would expect that this is the good situation compared to having the observer on the primary side. If you lose the standby database, well, in that case, the observer will still have connectivity with the primary database and the primary database will keep also writing uh, without protection of the standby database. But now see carefully what happens if we just lose the connectivity with the primary site and the standby site. Well, in this case, two things will happen. The primary database lose the quorum. And so to avoid the split brain condition, the primary database will shut down, even if it's still healthy. And the observer will not see the primary database anymore. So it will initiate a failover, an automatic failover to the standby database. So just because we had the network disconnection, the primary database did the shutdown and we had the failover on the standby side. And if you think about it, having network disconnection between the primary and the standby side is the most common reason uh, why there are problems in a high available environment. So this is something that you need to protect better. And this is why having the observer on the standby side is not a good solution. But also if I lose the full standby side, this is also something very bad in this situation because I have no more quorum. I have no more standby database where I can do the failover, but still the primary database will shut down thinking that the observer and the standby database are doing a failover because the primary cannot unilaterally say I will keep writing if the observer and the standby database are still alive somewhere. So the primary has to protect the configuration by shutting down and avoiding any data loss or split blame condition. And uh, of course, if I lose the observer, this is again a situation where uh, the primary and the standby will keep working. So you see that putting uh, 
the observer on the standby side is generally a very bad idea. Now let's see what happens if I put the observer on the third side, and this is the Oracle recommendation. If I lose the primary database or the full primary site, I will have an automatic failover. If I lose the standby database or the full standby site, well, the primary will keep working because it still has connectivity with the observer. And if I lose the network between the primary and the standby site, um, the primary will keep writing without protection. And last, that will never change. If I lose the observer, the primary and standby still have connectivity and the configuration will keep working uh, unobserved. So we have seen that putting the observer on a third side is the best solution. It gives me the best protection against the different failure scenarios that I can have in a fast start failover configuration. Now, if you want to have a highly available observer, you can put multiple observer on multiple uh, sites. Okay, imagine that you have many sites available. This is very uncommon, but you could potentially put one observer for each site. But it's important to understand that you will always have one active observer at the time. It's always the primary and the standby database that agree on a new active observer. So in case I lose the active observer, the primary and the standby will understand that there is no observer anymore and will uh, elect a new uh, active observer among the uh, surviving observer. But this is always something that is agreed uh, um, between the primary and the standby database because you need the quorum to elect a new active observer. This is very important to know. But if you don't have that many third sites, you can put all the observer eventually on, on an external site. Uh, this is a typical situation where you have three availability domains and you have one primary, one standby database, and you want to put the observer on the third side. Uh, and this is a good situation, but maybe you also want to protect the observer from losing the availability domain where the observer is. So you can also decide to put uh, the active observer on an external site or on a third site, and then put one observer with the primary and one observer with the standby database. But remember the conditions that we had where putting the observer with the standby database is not a good idea. So you need to achieve a configuration where the observer that protects the primary is never together with the standby. And we have a property that you can set in, uh, in DataGuard for that, that is uh, the preferred observer hosts that you can use, for example, when the primary database is on the first site, you can specify that you want either the external observer or the observer on the primary site. And for the standby site, I also have to define which observer will protect that standby database when it becomes a primary. So I can specify again the external site and the secondary site in that case, and make sure that I never have the observer together with the standby database. What if you don't have um, a third site and you just have two data centers? Well, you should really try to find a, an external site to be the arbitrator. That can be a computer room, that can be your office, uh, that can be a place where you can guarantee that you have a good network connectivity. Uh, but if you really want to put the observer in a data center, well, our recommendation is to put the observer together with the primary and have a highly available configuration where well, I have two observers with the primary database and one observer on the other side for when uh, the standby database becomes a new primary. So here I would set for the primary database that the two preferred observers are at the primary site. And for uh, the standby site, I would say that the preferred observer for that database is um, the one on the standby site. Now in 19C, I can specify up to three observers but starting with 21C, I can have up to four observers. So I can configure a symmetric configuration with the two observers for the primary on one side and the two observers uh, for uh, uh, the other database on the secondary side. It, it is still important to understand that if I have two observers on the primary side, 
uh, or even just the active observer on the primary site, I will still have the problem of losing the full primary site. There I'm losing the primary database, I'm losing the active observer, therefore the surviving observer has no way to understand if uh, the configuration on the primary site is still working because there is no connectivity anymore with either the observer or the primary site. So the surviving observer on the standby site cannot unilaterally become the active observer and start a failover because we expose uh, the configuration to a split brain uh, situation or a split brain risk. So we will never promote um, a surviving observer to the role of active observer without having access to the primary. So that will never happen. It, it would be really a risk. And we also get the question, why don't you just specify two active observers so that if you lose the observer on the primary side, well, the other active observer uh, will keep working. Um, this is a situation that in computer science cannot work. If you have a network partition and you have an even distribution, you cannot establish a quorum. So you cannot say, hey, uh, the quorum is with the primary, the primary should keep working, or the quorum is with the standby database, we should do a failover. So this is a situation that cannot work. You always need to have um, a odd number um, of observer. But the problem is that if I put another observer on the primary site, well, the majority will be on the primary site and, um, and it will uh, act with the same behavior of having just a single observer on the primary site. And if I try to put more observers, well, when they are uh, evenly distributed, I have no quorum, so I'm not solving the problem. And when I put more observer on the standby site, I will also have all the problems that I have by having just one observer on the standby site. So there is no real solution with that. So remember my recommendation, try to put the observer on the third site. If you don't have a third site, put the observer on the primary and make sure that the observer is never running where the standby database is running.